Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'll be sharing my own expertise on how to make Magento 2 faster and I'll be sharing out certain steps which will help you to optimize the performance of any Magento 2 websites. As you all know, Magento 2 is loaded with so many features. As a result, we have to pay the price of slower performance because most of the times we have heard from the developers as well as the store owners uh, like uh, they have complaints regarding the speed of their Magento 2 website. So without any further ado, let's get started. So over here, I have uh, listed around nine steps and these are very really like uh, these are really easy steps even if you're not a developer so you can take the help of any developer like this are like <coughs> most of the tasks like if you have the knowledge about the configurations of magento then uh, the uh, like uh, the things which i've mentioned over here that can be achieved without the involvement of any developer okay so the first step that i have mentioned over here is that the inspection of the third party extensions which is already installed so uh, <coughs> so this is very much important uh, because because in most of the cases we have seen that after the installation of certain modules the websites has gone slower so it is very much important to detect which of the modules is really impacting the speed of your magento 2 website correct so like uh, i've written a command over here this is a basically a magento cli command uh, which will uh, let's say which will help you to enable and disable the modules so what we can do first of all you can enable it like uh, by default it, it is enabled so what we need to do you have to disable certain modules if you find that there are certain modules which might hamper your Magento 2's uh, performance so what you need to do you have to simply disable that particular module and check the website speed so if that particular module after disabling the particular module the speed of your website has improved that means there's certain problem in that module so in that case if it is developed in-house then you need to check into the codes that is uh, that has been implemented for that module or if it is a like model which has been purchased from any vendor then you need to contact the, the uh, support team of that particular module the first step <coughs> is done now the optimize the images so as you will know since it's a website so it will have lots of images so the one thing that needs to be kept in mind is that all the images like let's say for the icon starting from the icons to the banners to the product images to, to the category images whatever images has been used so those are been optimized before uploading it to your websites so there are lots of tools available in the marketplace of magento's marketplace so uh, one can uh, let's say one can use those tools in order to optimize those images so that it can be compressed and then it is being uploaded to the website the third step that i mentioned over here is the make sure the cache is on that means if you have to go to the magento's admin and go to the system and click on the cache management so when you click on this so this thing will come up and make sure like all your cache types are enabled okay so you have to simply go over here select all and click on enable and click on submit so the moment you'll do this so you'll find that all your cache types are have been enabled and if you see over here it says that it's been invalidated so in that case just go over here and if it is says invalidated, that means you have to flush the cache So this is simply a cache memory which is being used by the Magento's application. So make sure this cache management or this cache memory is enabled because if it is disabled, that it will really make your website really, really, very, really slow actually. Okay. So this is regarding the cache storage. Yeah. I'll move on to the f next thing that is using the fastest hosting possible. So whenever you are trying to uh, like uh, make a website uh, using the magento's application make sure you have a good hosting provider uh, be it any uh, like uh, you should have a proper ram management okay and uh, like like the memories like the memory storage and all so it should be a good uh, hosting provider that you should look upon so that on like on because 
because it's it's like it's kind of a base on where your Magento's application will be running on. So make sure you will have all the RAMs installed, like sub uh, like uh, sufficient RAMs, memory should be there properly, and uh, like uh, you should always prefer for the SSDs if it is there. Okay, so yeah, so the fourth one as I said, we should we should choose for the fastest hosting provider if possible. Yeah, the fifth one. So make sure the production mode is on. So over here I can I can tell you that uh, by default the Magento's when you install the Magento like uh, by default there are three versions or three modes of it. So one is the default, one is the developer, and third one is the production mode. So what happens when you install it by like uh, the, like by initially its mode is default, and let's say if your developer is working on it like for the debug debugging process, so generally it like we can change it to the developer mode. So when the development process is over, make sure that you are changing or uh, like changing the mode of your Magento's application to production. So over here, if you see, I have also given one CLI command. In this way, what you can do, you can deploy or you can change the mode of your Magento's application to production mode. So whenever the production mode is enabled, it really fasters like fasten your website's performance yeah the sixth one never use js bundling yes of course so over here if you go to this uh, stores and go to the configuration i'll tell you about it what this js bundling is so if, if you go over here and choose to advance and go to developer so over here for the javascript settings and for the CSS settings, uh, yeah, over here. So if you see this part, enable JavaScript bundling. Uh, so what this does is that is it basically if you enable it. So if you go over here, uncheck this box, and if you choose to uh, choose yes, so what it will do, it will try to group all those JavaScript files, uh, like uh, like it will help to uh, like it will cluster or it will group similar the javascript files in one place that means uh, like uh, like what it will do by storing all the similar javascript files so it will consume the memory spaces so the more like uh, let's say after one year of timeline so it will have like it will be like um, like in your server it will consume a memory space of all those similar looking javascript files at one place so as the time goes on so in your server so all these javascript files will be getting saved so that's why it is recommended not to use this javascript bundling because it will help because what it does it's basically like previously it was recommended to improve the performance but slowly and steadily it has been observed that if you enable this option what it will do it will group similar javascript files and it will save it in your server so as time goes on so it will more and more it will consume the spaces and hence it will like it will have an impact on your speed or the like or on the website speed so it's better not to enable it now the seventh one is JSS and CSS JSON and CSS minification so what it does basically uh, like when a CSS file or JS files is being uh, like uh, it's written like the codes if you follow there are lots of spaces, there are lots of tabs, there are lots of comments are written over there. So as a result, a particular file becomes, the size of the file becomes large. So what will happen if you enable the CSS and JS minification? So uh, like, uh, and most, uh, like most important thing over here is that it will only work if production mode is enabled. So make sure if you are enabling the CSS and JS minification, you are changing the mode of your Magento's application to production mode. So only then only this particular minification will work. Okay. So in CSS and JS minification, what will do? As I said, it will remove out all the spaces, all the comments, which is there in your file. So that will make the file much more slower. Not slower, sorry. It will uh, it will make it much more smaller. Okay. So this is what uh, what is meant by the CSS and JS minification okay 
and the eighth one is the built-in cache so over here if you go to the stores configuration and if you go to the system okay meanwhile i forgot you to show you where you can find the uh, enabling just css and js minification uh, go to the developer same stores configuration developer go to the javascript settings and go to this tab javascript settings and go to minify javascript files so over here also it is written minification is not applied in developer mode that means this minification of javascript files as well as the minification of css file will only work when you have enabled the production mode okay so that means it will remove out all the comments all the tabs all the spaces from your js and css files making the file much more smaller since it's a like for the demo purpose i've installed this magento 2.3.3 community version and <coughs> sorry commerce version as you can see so that's why it's all 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 the options are in default uh, default state so you need to change it to yes and save the total configuration okay now the eighth one use built-in cache so if you go to the same system configuration and okay the page is still loading let it load first now if you go to the system configuration and click on this advanced tab inside the advanced tab you click on system you'll find the full page cache okay inside the full page cache there will be two options one is the built-in cache and one is cache so it is always recommend to use the built-in cache only that is provided by the magento's application and not to use varnish cache which i will not recommend because varnish cache is a third party application and since it's a third party application you need to have a separate maintenance separate service for it okay so it's always recommend to go for the built-in cache system which is being provided by the magento's application only okay now the last one it says that they enable the flat catalog so the in uh, i'll tell you how to configure it first then i'll tell you the importance of it so in order to enable the uh, flat catalog go to system configuration click on catalog and then click on catalog uh, as well now in the store front if you scroll down this option called the flat catalog product okay so if you choose to yes so if you choose to like choose this option to yes what it will do it will reduce the number of mysql queries that has been triggered whenever certain actions that have been done in the store front by the customers let's say searching of searching of products or uh, like a listing of products viewing of products viewing of categories okay so there are two options <coughs> like the flat category and the flat catalog product options are there so what it does like we because in magento what we have we do not have the flat uh, like let's say the flat table for the product and catalog so what happens whenever you are doing certain actions in the storefront based upon the category or product lots of mysql queries have been run basically the join queries have been implemented so in that case in that case what happens is that it takes certain amount of time in order to run those queries since because it will be joining like number of tables at one go and it will giving out that result so this is how the default magento works but if you enable the flat category or the flat product what it will do it will try to reduce the mysql queries as a result whatever actions you'll be doing on in the storefront let's say for the catalog as well as let's say for the categories and the product it will reduce those queries and it will give you the result in a certain period of time okay so with that i believe i have covered all the steps and i have explained like what is the importance of those steps and how it can help you to optimize and help you to speed up your magento's uh, to website okay so if you have any query just give your comments um, on this video i'll try to reply it back okay if you have any feedback also i'm I like I'll, I'll look forward to that as well okay and you can also suggest me what sort of videos i can put up in the future so that you can have also have an idea and i can also have my views on it okay so with that go i'll be ending up this video so if you have liked this video please click on the like button share this video as much as possible and yes don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well because so that you don't miss any upcoming videos of mine 
okay so with that thanks a lot for watching take care bye bye